Jai. Hey, Mark. Hey, how are you, man? I'm good, mate. How are you? <laughs> Jay Khan is the is the owner bartender for for Koa, and he's just been announced the the best bar in Asia, sponsored by Peria. How does it feel? Man, it's unreal, man. We were not expecting this seriously. <laughs> I, I I I don't have a speech. I wish I had one, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's always a bit risky preparing a speech. You should have. You should, no, you, know <laughs> you should have. You should have. You should have gave me some hint, you know. No hints. That like you should no give me some hints. <laughs> <laughs> no way, I'm sure it's, it's a lot oh, more man, natural. It's real, man. Awesome, awesome. So, that, for the people joining in all over the world who have just just found out that your uh, your your Kaira is the best bar in Asia, uh, tell us a bit about what your uh, your concept is when you opened in 2017. Yeah, man. So uh, we opened Koa uh, uh, for one main purpose, uh, which is to uh, re-educate people uh, here on agave spirits. Because uh, that what you know, it's, it's it's a it's a big mystery uh, over here. People who knows about tequila, uh, they don't know it the way they're supposed to. Uh, so our main goal was to make sure that we could you know uh, reintroduce agave spirit to the local market over here, and hopefully they can start appreciating agave spirit as we do. So that was the only goal from the beginning, and up until now, uh, we've been pursuing the same thing. Awesome. Well, I think you, you can say you've certainly achieved that today. I mean, can, from since 2017, can you give us four or five key milestones across the bar's, uh, the bar's genesis over the last five years? Uh, yes, man. So we opened in uh, uh, December 2017. And uh, because it's such a niche concept, uh, we didn't get the initial buzz. Uh, we, were not, we were actually not making any profit until after six months. So most of uh, the guests that we have here in Koa, it's through word of mouth. So our goal was to make sure that whoever walks into Koa, they have a good experience and they remember, uh, you know, they, they bring something with them whenever they uh, uh, visit us. So it was simple. We, we just wanted to make sure anybody who came to Koa, they had a great time. And through that, uh, slowly and slowly, uh, you know, it picked up uh, very gradually. So. It, it wasn't something that we opened and it was successful. It really took some time. And then, of course, we had so many obstacles in between. Uh, we had the protest, uh, which happened in 2019, and then followed by uh, COVID as well. So we had to go through quite a lot. And on top of that, uh, our concept uh, was a very niche concept. So it wasn't something, I mean, not everyone will get excited when they hear about tequila. And usually people say, oh, Koa is a tequila bar. So it was a little bit tricky. But when we have guests came to Koa, they know we're more than that, you know? So we're not just a tequila bar. We are an actual bar. So, uh, yeah, but it took us a while. But, you know, in the end, uh, now I would say um, we are in a position where we have uh, a, a good amount of, you know, uh, regular guests. They actually frequent us. And uh, they'll be very grateful and very happy right now. I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will. That's, the way you the way you educate guests about agave spirit is is something which yeah. everyone feeds back. I mean, how do you how do you approach to be an educational bar but then fun at the same time? Yeah, so we don't want to be too geeky or too serious about what we do. So when we have guests that walks into Koa, we, we give them options. You know, like most of the guests that comes to Koa, they actually uh, order cocktails from our menu. But then we have maybe twenty percent. Uh, who wants to know a bit more about mezcal, a bit more about tequila and some other, you know, agave spirits from Mexico. Uh, so what we do is we take our time, we sit down with the guests and make sure that uh, whatever they order, uh, they understand. But that really depends. We observe, you know, we don't want to go sit down with a table of guests who are having fun and suddenly we sit down and stop talking to and things. Uh, so we, we observe, you know, through observation and um, all, you know, the guests request us, uh, they want to learn more about agave spirit. So either way, so uh, one way or the other, if we know the guest is interested, we spend time with them, we even sit down with them. No matter how busy we are, this is uh, something, uh, including myself and all my team members, uh, we all do. It. Certainly, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a fun experience, but you also feel as if you come away learning a lot. And so talk to me, you're, you're now the, the second Hong Kong bar to get the, to get the best bar in the best bar in Asia crown. How, um, tell us a bit about the Hong Kong bar scene. What do you think is going to happen there over the next few years? 
I think uh, recently the bars are back open. I mean, we're lucky we have a restaurant license. Uh, so uh, we could operate even throughout the COVID, but with restricted time, of course. But recently, a couple of weeks ago, the bars are back open uh, almost normally. Uh, we just hope that, you know, this continues. Everybody, you know, is there. They're, they're excited, you know, at least they can go back to work. And uh, uh, so it's amazing right now. There's, you know, so many new cocktail bars opening as well. And uh, the scene is happening. So uh, it, it never stopped, actually. Even during COVID, uh, we see so many people opening new bars over there. So this is, it's happening. And, and, you know, Hong Kong has always been like this. So uh, uh, every year, you know, you see these some really exciting concept, not just bars, but restaurants as well. Uh, so it's always happening over here. Can't wait, can't wait to get back out there and, and, and see you, mate. Yeah, man. Can't, so can't wait to have you. Can't wait to have you. <laughs> Tell us a bit about um, Mezcal Mission, just uh, as a means of a very quick explanation. Jay, Jay and his team launched Mezcal Mission at the end of the, in the middle of 2020, which was essentially yeah. Mezcal tequila, a garlic spirit tastings. With uh, where you, whereby you donated money to a local homeless charity. How's that been for you? Yeah. So, so we work closely with uh, Habitat for Humanity, which is a global charity organization. And uh, Mescal Mission was set up uh, by me and uh, my partner, Andrew. Uh, he was actually our guest. Uh, he is from the U.S. and he loves tequila. So uh, we, you know, had this chat, you know, let's do something outside of our work time. So we decided to do this uh, uh, project where we could raise funds for charity, but also at the same time uh, promote agave spirits. So all the proceeds from the Mescal Mission actually goes to Habitat for Humanity. So we don't even pocket a single cent. Uh, everything goes to charity. Uh, and we are doing this on our day off, which is Monday, the Monday the Bob is closed. And uh, we just do it because it's our passion. And at the same time, it's a win-win situation. We're we get to talk about what we love to, and at the same time, we can help uh, people in need as well. So that's the whole idea about uh, that scavenger. Yeah, it's an awesome project, and, and one that will be continuing this year and beyond, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, happening uh, twice every uh, month. Uh, so the next one is going to be coming Monday as well. So it's, it's going to be an ongoing thing. Uh, and, you know, we don't want to stop it uh, I mean, unless it's necessary. But, but right now, you know, we've been doing this for the past six months. And uh, we will continue this as long as we can. Well, you might be able to you might be able to bump up the price of the tickets. That donate even more money now. <laughs> so we're just gonna just yeah. gonna flip to some yeah, questions. Uh, some, some, questions sure. some questions from the floor, which uh, which are coming in. Uh, the first one we've got from uh, sure. from Valentina. First of all, uh, she says congratulations. Why do you think guests keep coming back to your Thank bar? You. Good question. I think it's simple. Uh, uh, you know, our, our our design of the bar is, you know, it's very small, the layout. Tables are very close to each other. And uh, it's all about uh, the interaction between us and the guests. Uh, we, you know, for, for us, whenever a uh, guest comes in, we always ask them, you know, if they've been here before or, you know, uh, where they hear about us. So we always start with this uh, conversation and then we just take it from there and make sure that we get to know who they are. Because once you get to know who the guest is, uh, it becomes very comfortable approaching them and even for the guests to approach the guests as, uh, to, uh, to the staff as well. So this, this, this is what we do with every single guest to make sure we start a conversation and, and make sure that we talk to every single guest. It just makes us comfortable and the guests comfortable. And in the end of the day, you know, like provide them with uh, uh, the best experience we can. Absolutely, absolutely. I think hospitality as we enter the recovery period from the, the pandemic is going to be more important than ever. So yeah, I'm totally, totally with you on that. Um, another question, uh, might be a bit of a controversial one. What's your what's your favorite bar in Hong Kong? You're not allowed to say Co. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, to be honest, I go to a bar not really because of the bar, it's because of the people inside. Uh, so I could not pick a, a single favorite of mine. It, it really depends on who is behind the bar, actually. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I can't answer <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, uh, another question, very quickly. Um, uh, what do you think of Asia's 50 best bars list this year? I, I don't know. The bar was so busy. <laughs> I, have to go, I, 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 I have to go through the list uh, after work, you know. I'll sit down and have a look. But seriously, uh, we, we could not uh, catch up because uh, it was very busy and it was having a good time, you know, like right now. I'm not sure if you can see. There's still a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I recognize Holly yeah. there. 
Yeah, I'll answer you that later. Anyway. <laughs> uh, another another big question, which uh, which I was actually going to ask you myself. What is going to be the uh, what's the cocktail you're celebrating? Uh, we made a few uh, uh, special cocktails for today. Uh, we had some with tequila. We had some with mezcal. We had some with whiskey as well. Some with gin as well. Uh, earlier, I was uh, having one of the drink called the rhubarb high bowl, which we were having today. It was just designed for today's event, which is a simple, refreshing drink, you know, perfect for the weather. It's with a rhubarb and apple uh, cordial that we created ourselves uh, with London essence, to uh, London essence uh, tonic water and using a tequila base. Sounds absolutely delicious. Right, I'm sure you want to get off, uh, get off and party. So, just one final question: What's the uh, what's the plan for the rest of the evening? What's your um, what's your route? Uh, we well, we have to make sure everything is under control. So. <laughs> We have to go back to work, uh, of course, and uh, make sure that everybody gets the drink. Well, that's brilliant. Thank you very much, Day. And just uh, let me, on behalf of 50 Best and all the watchers, a huge congratulations for being named the, the best bar in Asia, sponsored by Perrier. Uh, congratulations, and please do go and enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. We'll talk soon. Ciao. Talk soon. Cheers, Jay. Thank you, mate. Bye-bye.